So you've had a hard day at the computer. Updated your books, written some letters, sent some invoices, paid some bills, learned a new programming language, calculated a few things, played some games. You know, you've only scratched the surface of personal computers. With some relatively simple software and hardware, you're ready to connect into the endless realm of telecommunications. Out there, somewhere, are hundreds of big systems that will search information for you. Like browse through an encyclopedia, shop for a toaster, leave instant mail for anyone in North America, order and receive software for your machine, change your bank account, change someone else's bank account, start an international incident. This is all possible because all computers, no matter what their size or price, can exchange words in a form called ASCII. That's an acronymese for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. ASCII is sort of Esperanto for computers. Now because of ASCII, my little machine can speak to any other machine. All we have to do is hook them up. Hey, there are some considerations. The obvious way to hook a computer to, in Toronto to one in Toledo is with a phone line because that network is already in place. But we have to take care of our little computer first. Now, because the interchange of information is standard among all machines, you have to throw all of your machine's personality out the window. Your machine might be capable of color, graphics, sound, and a lot of fancy tricks, but some other machine won't understand them. Hooking yourself to another computer is done in the most basic of ways with a thing called a terminal program. This one allows me to communicate and store the session on disk for reading or printing later. It also allows me to send things from my disk. Maybe a program I want to send someone or a letter I've already typed with my word processor. Now, terminal mode. First thing you notice about your machine under the control of the terminal program is that it behaves strangely. In this case, I can't even write on my own screen. The machine's dead. It's not actually. If so I type the letter A, the terminal program is directing its ASCII code to a plug on the back in the coded ones and zeros that computers love. Internally, the computer deals with ones and zeros, something like this. This is ASCII for the word hello in 8-bit bytes, H-E-L-L-O. Now, to communicate over the phone line, the machinery has to send these parallel bytes serially. Let me send you some serial information. Ready? Now, I just indicated 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. But you just saw the light light twice. So how can you tell how many zeros are in between? Timing. See, if you know how long I consider each digit to last, you can keep track of how many digits are there. I have to help you out a bit, though. Here's that 8-bit byte that represents the letter H. Now, the entire range of characters that ASCII sends can be represented by 7 bits of data. Seven bits can be any of 128 different patterns. Now, if they used eight bits like this, all ASCII bytes would start with a zero. When my digits start with a zero, you don't know when I started sending the digits. So, for communications, I add a one to the beginning of every character I send. It's not significantly part of the number or anything. It's just a signal that a character is coming. So, to eliminate any further iffiness, I also send you a one at the end of each character and a bit that helps you confirm whether or not you got my transmission correctly. The two computers that are communicating have to agree on all of this in advance. So, the terminal program allows you to adjust all of this extra coding. Most communications uses one start bit, seven bits of data, one stop bit, and a parity bit. The uh, parity bit is used to flag whether there's an odd or even number of ones in the data bits. It can be used to tell if anything went wrong in the transmission. So, oh, got the two computers ready to talk. Now I have to take care of the telephone connection. Phones, as you may have noticed, uh, handle talking and singing, whistling sounds, not ones and zeros. So, there's no point in fooling around. We're going to change the ones and zeros into sounds. This is a modem. That's contraction talk for modulator demodulator, or modulator demodulator. It plugs into the computer and it converts its ones and zeros into little whistles. Now, we need two-way communication, so the modem's designed around four different sets of tones. Two represent the ones and zeros on the way out of my machine, and the lower set of tones are the ones and zeros coming back. This is a pretty basic modem. The earlier models had a confusing switch labeled originate and receive. Modern modems just listen to the other modem and adjust themselves accordingly. 
it doesn't really matter which computer is sending which set of tones as long as both modems know who's doing what. The computer answering the call can be the originator or the receiver. Modems that are fancier still will dial the phone themselves and answer it too. I think that's scary. Well, let's call someone. Now, I have an amplifier connected to the phone line so you can hear what the modems hear. I'm going to dial the call and wait for the other modem to answer the phone by sending out its tone. Then I'm going to enable mine. Now, this is a real number, not a 555 number. Here's the other modem. Here's mine. Now, when I type, you're going to hear a chirping sound. That's the two tones I'm sending, switching back and forth, and the other machine responding. And now, my typing's coming on the screen. My characters are actually leaving the other modem, going across the phone line as tones, into the other machine, which is echoing the letters that I type back to me. That's why typing seems just a little bit weird in this terminal mode. Well, I types travel a long way to get to the screen. Have you heard enough modems now? Now, because the other computer is in charge of letting me see what I'm typing, it can choose what it wants to send back. Often on a system that requires a password, the other computer won't echo your password back to you so that someone looking over your shoulder can't read it. Now, I'm sending these characters out at a rate of 300 bits per second. That sounds fast, but the communication is a series of ones and zeros and it takes around 10 bits to send just one character. So I'm only really sending about 30 characters per second. 300 bits per second is known as 300 baud. I haven't got a clue why. 300 baud is fast enough for typing back and forth, but people who transfer whole pages of information have fancier modems that whiz along at 1200 baud. If you're calling a big system, it'll listen to you and automatically adjust itself to your baud rate. Hey, hey look, I'm getting some mail.